Okay. Hello, people. I'm excited to be back with another episode of the Millie Fox Show. I have one of my brand new friends on the show, Avisha Kassir. I'm very excited to introduce her. She's an entrepreneur extraordinaire with 15 years of experience on both the home shopping network and the shopping channel with more than $100 million in sales. Uh, Now... Yeah, now she has had eight years of experience in real estate, um, and she's used so many aspects of her live TV experience to be successful in real estate. She has two offices, one in Virginia, one in Miami Beach, and is licensed in real estate in four states. So D.C., Virginia, I think it's Maryland and Florida. Um, Canadian in the house. So <laughs> make sure I get that right uh, with the abbreviations for the states. So welcome. I'm so happy to have you on my podcast. Um, Avisha and I met recently. We connected our sons go to the same school and we met at a pool party and just, you know, hit it off. And we've gone for like several lunches and, you know, things like that and gotten to know each other pretty quickly. So welcome. Thank you. Thank you so much. I appreciate having me today. Yeah. So my first question for you, because when we first met, I think we we established pretty quickly that we both believe in manifestation and yes. we used it to cr- consciously craft the lives that we've had. Right. So you spoke to me a lot about your move from Virginia. Right. No? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yeah, From yeah, Virginia. Yeah, yeah, perfect. I'm like confusing Vail. <laughs> no, that's Cal. That's Colorado. You can tell that geography was never my strongest suit. Good at a lot of other things, but okay. So your move from Virginia to Miami. Um, and can you tell us a little bit about that part of your story? Yeah. So um, we got married in 2013 and there was a blizzard in DC. There's three blizzards that happened back to back. And the first blizzard was fun. The second one was okay. And the third one, we were just going insane. Um, Mm -hmm. We needed to kind of segue away from our world that we had. And we had just gotten married. We didn't have kids. We, you know, needed to buy a house and start that whole process. And David looked at me during blizzard number three and said, you know, I've always wanted to live in Miami. What do you think about moving to Miami? And at the time we were living in our one bedroom condo. Um, David has a lot of real estate. So he had real estate in different parts of DC, but I really love my condos. So we lived in my like 700 square foot, 800 square foot condo. And, you know, we, we want to change and we got up. It took us a year to find our dream house in Miami. It was Mm -hmm. definitely a lot of back and forth. We kept it a complete secret. Um, All of our friends just thought that like, wow, these two really love going to Miami every weekend. But secretly, (laughs) we were like flying down, looking at property, trying to see, you know, where we want to live and where we want to grow roots and where we want to kind of meet people. So it organically happened, but it was a really slow process. Mm, Okay, so this was not like an overnight quantum leap style move to Miami. It was very intentional. Okay. Yes. Okay, so then pause for a second and let's go back a little bit because you had this insane career, you and your Mm -hmm. sister, right? You started, um, let me see, it was a housewares business. Is that right? Yeah, definitely. So Sorelli was the name of our line Mm -hmm. and Sorelli was um, born to be on TV shopping channels. At the time, nobody really love to say that they bought something off HSN or QVC. So they wanted to change the stigma of the shopping Mm -hmm. channels. So they brought us in with really high end, um, luxurious, 24% lead crystal, handcrafted gold gilded tea sets and stuff like that. So um, the shopping channel asked us to create a line. So my sister and I created a line and Sorelli was born. She went from zero to a thousand overnight. It was a really great success. Um, As our orders got bigger and bigger, we dealt with a lot of more challenges and different types of things that go with manufacturing because we manufactured our line. Mm -hmm. Um, We designed it, we manufactured it, we imported it. And then we are actually the on-air spokespersons that went on air as well and that sold the line. So Mm -hmm. um, there was a lot of work. There was a lot of traveling. We did crystal, porcelain, tea sets, dinnerware sets, 
tchotchkes as what a lot of people would call <laughs> yes, them. Right. Um, and on HSN, they would only allow one on-air spokesperson and we were two people. So um, that really worked to our advantage because we were two sisters. We would sell a little, we would tell jokes, we'd bicker a little bit. So if you had a sister, let's say on the other part of the country and you missed her, you know, they would tune into our show and buy the line because of mm. the camaraderie of having the sisterhood. So mm -hmm. it was a really great success. We went from absolutely nothing, you know, a, a line of kind of, we sold our stuff in my father's gallery. So we had retail gallery stores in New Jersey and Connecticut and New York. And then all of a sudden we were packaging these crystal pieces that were really difficult to ship. And um, 15 years later, it was a huge success. That's amazing. So you went, that was basically an overnight success, right? Like you just like yeah. went and like it took off and you were pretty yeah. young at the time considering, you know, if you think about, I was you super know, young. Yeah. The they used to age. try to dress me up. Yeah. They used to be like, um, they used to dress me up um, into like a Southern belle to make me look older. Cause I was only like 24, 25 when I started. Okay. And the average demographic, she was like 58, 60, 65 years old. So, mm -hmm. you know, so at that time in your life, did you know about the principles of manifestation? Um, you know, I had always used the concept of manifestation, but no, I had no idea that there was like this amazing world of books and knowledge and gurus and different people that kind of yeah. teach you about these different things and kind of um, have this whole school of thought. Um, my husband is very much my little munchkin is waking up. So sorry. Mm -hmm. um, okay. My husband is very much into reading all of these books, Napoleon Hill and, and was, a, was really a guru in the space. Um, David came from a really awesome family, but they treated him like shit. So um, he really had to create his own world and his own life. And he became very successful from a young age, just really working his butt off and mm -hmm. manifesting an amazing life for himself that he really wanted. Mm -hmm. So he brought that to the forefront of your consciousness. But looking back yes. now, looking back on those days where you, you manifested such success in that initial business I don't know if it was your very first business but like in that houseware Sorelli business what do you think you did in terms of the energetics of it um, to make that happen you know I'm not sure I, I can't really sit here and say but I can tell you that from when I was a really young girl I knew that I was going to do certain things that were going to be really big. And I can't tell you like what they were or on what scale that they were, but I always knew that I vibrated on a very different wavelength than what my friends or the people around me um, wanted or were looking for. Um, it was really important for me just to stay focused. I mm -hmm. sometimes would laugh and think like, my God, the things that you want in life are just so over the top. Uh -huh. And if I, if I had known about this whole school of thinking and the way of thinking that it was actually something to do, girl, I would have been thinking of much bigger things. Uh, I, I would have I've amplified it even more. I've heard that so many times that when somebody reaches a certain level of success that they, the, the first piece of advice they give is ask for more sooner. Yeah, definitely reach for the stars, you know, um, a lot of people over the course of the years have made comments to David and I, and, you know, I always say that, like, I didn't just land here. Um, this life wasn't just created overnight. It's been a lot of hustle and bustle and a lot of thinking and dreaming and wishing and, and working towards that dream. And, you know, we have vision boards. Um, I have some crazy things on my vision board, you know, and I know that they'll one day come true. And that's the fun part of it, right? Knowing that, these wishes and dreams that you want that you think that are so untangible and then one day they become tangible and you're like hell yeah that's absolutely amazing and mm -hmm. and to think that everything comes down to the power of your thought is really crazy and they don't teach you these things in school which no. I don't understand it no I think they should I guess that's not what traditional school is for and I say that yeah air, totally air quotes. 
Um, definitely wasn't designed to create a lot of free thinkers, but that's a whole other podcast topic. Yes, <laughs> totally. <laughs> um, okay, so let's let's move forward into your shift into real estate. I'm curious about that. I'm curious to hear how you use, because the first thing that comes to mind for me here is self-image, okay? Like even when you're saying to me about how um, as a child you knew and you felt like you were here for big things to do big things. So you had this in your image of yourself from a very young age right and you're they say you know self-image sets the boundaries of personal achievement so if you have this huge vision of who you are you know you're gonna do that you're gonna go forth and make that happen so when you shifted away from um Sorelli into real estate tell us about how you carried over what you learned there and parts of that self-image that you developed on television into your next iteration of your career? Yeah, you know, um, going from TV shopping channels and working with China and manufacturing and having the craziest issues and hurdles and problems and, 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 and just the craziest of crazy problems that you deal with when you're working on a line that's being completely manufactured by hand across the world. And, mm -hmm. you know, you have to, it's not like it's going on a shelf that, okay, it's going on, let's say Macy's or Bloomingdale's shelf and whenever it gets there, it gets there. It has to be on a certain timeline. This is live television and you have to follow mm -hmm. their goals and their timelines. And, you know, for example, HSN is a $4 billion company. So every time you have a show, you have to be invited back on the show. So mm -hmm. you have to, for example, sell a minimum of $2,500 a minute or you're not invited back as they like to say, you're as good as your last show. So mm. it's something that's a lot of like stress and a lot of work and, you know, taking a brand and making myself a world brand because we were sold all over the world because we were on the shopping channel in Australia and England and Canada and US. Um, I learned a lot about marketing and mm. about how to get the get the product appeal to the masses. You know, um, when you're talking to the camera, I used to call it the black hole because I did not think it was a welcoming thing whatsoever. Mm -hmm. um, so when you talk to the black hole, you know, on HSN or a TV channel, I have to say so many appealing things that resonates with you or you or you or you that you're gonna stop everything that you're doing. And then you're gonna pick up the phone and call. And real estate is really the same thing. Features and benefits, you have to really hit all of the features and all of the benefits and why it's so good for somebody and use mm -hmm. that in the marketing and target that in the marketing. Staging, staging. I used to do the set staging all the time for my different shows, for the different Easter shows or Christmas shows or different types of things. And visuals are the biggest thing. You know, I worked with some of the best producers around the world in the TV shopping space. So I was learning so many things. We took the, the senior president of productions to the factories in China and we did shoots of products and things there. So the value, the, the knowledge and the value of things that I learned really went from learning how to market this tea set to learning how to market this house. Mm -hmm. And um, doing that on a really large scale, the videos, the property tours, the way you use wording and the way that you captivate people, um, all of that worked directly into real estate. So it was mm -hmm. good. Mm -hmm. it, it reminds me of, you know, like the principles from Think and Grow Rich. And I'm sure you've read the book, right? Yes. The Napoleon Hill book, right? So it really makes me think about like how having like any experience with sales or marketing or learning how to communicate, like all of these things are so important and crucial. And that's why entrepreneurship um, is something that just makes you grow as a person in general, right? It's like learning to connect learning how to read people, learning um, what they desire and, and how to provide that for them, right? And like providing a, a service, a specialized service, right? For sure. And, and it transfers, it's so much transferable knowledge. And the way that you look at it can either be like, Ugh, like icky, you know, people are like so grossed out by sales, but then there's also the way to look at it like, you're really providing a service. I believe that sales is providing a service. And I know we're yeah, straying, a, straying a bit away um, from the manifestation topic, but I think it's important to, to speak on this for women listening who want 
to build businesses, right? Like there is the energetic side of it. Absolutely. Which involves being able to see yourself there, knowing that you are that person now that can have all those things, but also it does require the action, right? It does require the learning and the willingness to fail and the willingness to be a student um, and to know, to have faith and belief in yourself that you are providing a high service, right? Like real estate, such a high service, you are helping somebody find their dream home or you're helping someone find their dream vacation, like fulfilling yeah. a, a, you know, a dream vacation property. Like you're bringing their vision of what they want their life to look like alive, right? Um, totally. So I think that mindset shift is, is so key and, and great for people to know. It's like, it's not, it's not all just like waiting for the things to happen to you, like waiting for the opportunities to pop up in your life, but actively pursuing them as well. No, absolutely. Very well said. Yeah. Yeah. And I see that in you and David, that you really just have gone for it in so many different ways. And I love what you guys have created here in Miami for yourself. You guys have such a beautiful home and you're always out on the town doing the things, going to the hot events. Yeah. Um, I mean, and I'm curious to know because you have your sweet little boy, um, how has how has manifesting or the way you look at manifesting your dreams changed since you become a mother? You know, they really haven't. Okay. Um, I don't think that me wanting a house in St. Bart's has changed. I just need a bigger house now, you know, for the little Mm -hmm. munchkins. So Mm -hmm. um, I think that I, I'm not one of the people that have the mindset that when you have kids, they hold you down. If anything, I think um, they elevate. So I think that having my family is amazing, but also showing him, um, showing him the world and showing him all of those things that I was able to see is something that we really want to do. I mean, a lot of things that we want, I love to travel. My huge thing is traveling. Um, investment properties. We own a lot of investment properties and adding to our portfolio is also something that we really strive and work towards. So, Mm -hmm. you know, traveling, living a great life, partying through life. And, you know, the point is, is for us to be able to continue to do that and have my little son with us. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So in terms of, you know, the, the, the regular strains of motherhood, the tiredness, you know, the, the lack of energy that we might have once had. Girl, yes, <laughs> yes, for sure. We were, we were both just commiserating on this. Um, what is your take there on not having the same energy that you had before to maybe work towards those dreams? Or, um, you know, you see the people without children who, you know, have the extra time or whatever that may be. And you maybe you get into like a trap of comparison or you just feel a lot of pressure. You put a lot of pressure on yourself to live up to that standard of somebody who maybe has more time, has more energy, whatever that may be. So yeah, what have you shifted in your life or how, what advice might you give to somebody who's feeling that pressure um, or, you know, feeling guilty that they haven't done more? You know, I think we're the commander of our own ship. We either have to A, change the outcome or change our thought process. So there's two ways of doing this. Um, either be okay and accept what you can't change. If there are certain elements that you can't change, maybe your husband can travel, or maybe you have a son or a daughter that physically can't travel, or, you know, there's different things that, and I'm just using traveling because that's something that's passionate for me, but um I've traveled over a million miles already. So I've gone around the world hundreds of times. So for me, I don't have FOMO um, of certain things in particular, but I also am not sitting in here in Miami, not doing things. Um, You know, having the team around you and having the people around you is really important. So if I'm looking to go out two, three nights a week and to see my girlfriends or to be able to, um, you know, go to Art Basel or go to some of our favorite supper clubs, then 
you have to have great, let's say if you have kids, like great babysitters around you or a great network for people or have a husband that's going to man up for a night or two a week and be able to take care of things. I think setting those different pretenses. Now, let's say if I was a person that felt guilty, Mm -hmm. um, leaving my son home that I think a lot of maybe um, clients or different people that you work with can kind of also feel that way is that guilt does nothing but hold you down. Um, I think that coming to terms with what we want, obviously I don't leave my family five nights a week to go party. Um, but I also think it's really important for me to go out at least once, or like, let's say twice a week with girlfriends, if there's a charity event or a different event, I don't feel guilty. Um, Mm -hmm. I make sure that everything is taken care of for my son. I make sure that I'm a great wife. I'm, I hope I'm a great wife, at least let's just say, (laughs) um, I'm hoping that I'm a great mom and it takes work, you know, but there's some people that don't necessarily have that vision. They just want to be at home and be things. And that's fine. I think either changing the outcome of what you want is important or changing your mindset on what you really want is important. Mm -hmm. So I feel like people have two options. Yeah. It really does take getting clear on, on you, your desires first and foremost. Right. And I think people can fall into a trap of either thinking they want certain things because that's what other people are doing and they they're comparing themselves or they're just so out of touch with who they are that they don't actually know what they want, right, at all. So getting clear on who you are, what you want, and then getting the team, getting the support, being willing to ask for the help, and then releasing yourself from the guilt, renouncing yourself from the guilt. And I, I like what you said there, that guilt doesn't do anything good for us except for hold us down. But I think that there is really like you know, a pandemic of mom guilt, like where there's so many women out there just going like, ah, I could never do that. I could never go out, you know, twice a week. Some women just like, don't go out for years because they just Have don't run that way. Yeah. yeah. You know, they don't make the space for themselves, but what would be your, your advice for other steps you can take, you know, to release yourself from that, that cloud, that black cloud of guilt, mom guilt, you know, um, just accept it. You know, we're as good as our thoughts. And I think sometimes if we just kind of step back and if we personally accept it, now let's say if I had a husband that was totally against it, right? And he's like, you shouldn't go out or you shouldn't do this or that. Then I think that would probably be challenging for me um, because I want him to support me in every way. But Mm -hmm. at the same time, I would sit down with him, for example, or whoever it is around them and say, listen, For me to be a better mom, for me to be a better X, Y, and Z, uh, a husband, a wife, or whatever the case may be, I need this time for myself. And it might not necessarily be at nighttime. Maybe there's a time two days a week where you can get a nanny or where your kids are at school and you legitimately block off your calendar and say, I'm going to go for a a really nice walk. I'm going to meet one of my girlfriends for lunch. I'm going to walk back home. I'm not going to sit here and answer everybody's emails and just maybe take a few hours for yourself. Um, We're in control of our calendars and we're in control of our destiny of what we want to do on a day-to-day basis Mm -hmm. and, you know, kind of controlling that and planning in advance. I think it was moms um, planning in advance is something that's really key. I'm super organized. My list has a list, for example, it's kind of insane. (laughs) <laughs> I'm a Virgo, so it's a little bit neurotic on that level, but that's the that's the method to my craziness, if you will. Mm-hmm. And um, you know, there are certain times like I had a birthday party yesterday for my girlfriend. Um, I hosted my birth my best friend's lunch, and we were at lunch for four hours. Um, I work full time. Um, I have my baby, you know, and there's a lot of other things that's going on. We have a lot of um, investment properties and rental properties, so. I wear a lot of different hats, but I had a great time. I had four hours of a beautiful yeah. lunch and mandolin in Miami. Highly suggested if you guys haven't been there. And I have to take you there if you haven't been. 
I do need to, we do need to go. So you, you're really saying that you need to get clear on what you want and make it a priority. That's ultimately what you're saying. Yeah. It's like, honestly, I know that about the schedule thing is like, we feel like we have to be on call all the time as moms, because we're the go-to, you know, parent just in case or whatever, we have to be flexible, but you know what? That's why you build the team. That's why you build the people that you can rely 100%. on. And I think it is a control issue. I think it's the belief that we can do it better than anyone else. And I think that that's just, a, it's just an insecurity, you know, it's like, we feel like we need to prove how good we are because we can show up and do it until we have nothing left to give. And, you know, if I yeah. may interject, Millie, I actually think that that statement, I have a lot of friends that are like, I do it the best. Mm-hmm. I, I, I'm, I'm the best. And I'm like, actually, there are like a thousand other housekeepers that clean much better than you clean. Or there is a hundred other people that can cook dinners much better than you can cook. There's chefs mm-hmm. out there. There are other people out there, for example. Now, if your kid is sick and you need to console them, well then mommy all the way. But having people and help around you, you can find people that are going to do things 10 times better than you. And that's okay. That yeah. is a hundred percent okay. And mm-hmm. allowing them to do that only leverages you to be able to live the life that you want. And I think that is so key. Yeah, exactly. It's letting go of that need to like prove how good you are at everything so that you can actually do the things that you're good at, the things that bring you joy, the things that light you up. Because when you are doing those things, you're actually moving in the direction of what you want. You're actually more able to manifest more good, more, more on top of more, more of what you love when you're focused on what you love, when you're focused on honoring yourself. So I think that's so key and so true. And really it's just a releasing, right? Like it's like releasing the grip on what you think you should do so that you can do what you actually enjoy doing. So yeah. that's awesome. It's beautiful. And you are such an example of that. And, and it's, and it's even not to say that, you know, everybody has to want that. Not everybody has to want to go out two nights a week or three nights a week. Yeah. You know, if once every two weeks feel, fills your cup, then like, that's cool too. If you don't like the nightlife scene, do the daytime, like you were saying, right? So um, to, maybe it's to, even just to read a book or yes. to go exercise, or yeah. I know so many different moms that always say that they don't have time to exercise. Exercise is not necessarily like my biggest thing in the world. Like if I don't work out for a few weeks, I'm kind of like secretly like, that's amazing. I was too busy <laughs> and I didn't, couldn't work out. Um, you know, my, my brain and my, you know, serotonins don't necessarily have to be popping all the time to feel good. Um, but when I do go to Pilates or I do go to my classes, obviously I feel much better, but let's mm-hmm. say that's something that's been a goal that you really want to work out and you just can't find the time. Then at the beginning of the week, it's just like when they say, um, building wealth, wealth building is that you pay yourself first. And I think a lot of people think that is the craziest thing to do is to pay yourself first. But if you actually don't pay yourself first, you will never have the money to do the things that you want to do. So um, every time I get my commission checks from real estate, I always pay myself first before I pay everything else out. Because if I don't, that savings is never going to grow. I'm never going to be able to buy the next investment property that I want to buy. So Mm -hmm. doing the same thing, you know, if, if your major goal is to work out and you just don't have time, then the first thing you need to do on your calendar before you start putting the thousand different things for your kids and play dates and this, this, and that is to prioritize yourself and to put that exercise date on there. Start off with two days a week or three days a week, whatever you're looking, but try. And if you miss it, don't get upset, but just say, you know, I'm going to put that effort and time in because you deserve it. Yeah, I totally, totally agree with you. I remember after I first had Rosen, like waiting to hear from Junior when he was available to watch Rosen so that I could go to yoga. And I had a conversation with my sister-in-law about it. She's like, you can't wait for him. You have to schedule it and tell him. (laughs) Like that's yes. what it's like you can't wait because it's you're just gonna be waiting forever, right? Like waiting just brings on more waiting. That's where when we're in that manifesting of more of the same, you know. 100%, yeah. So yeah, I, I agree with you. And I think this is a great reminder for everybody listening, because I think that for the majority of women, we need reminders. We need reminders. So yeah. 
I'm so happy to have had you on. I would love for you to tell the people listening where they can find you. I know you've got a fun Instagram. Um, And also if they're in need of, you know, real estate in Miami, the surrounding areas or Virginia, um, how can they get in touch? Yeah, they can check out my Instagram, which is Avisha Kassir. Um, and then my website is also avishakassir.com. Um, you can find me really all over social media. Um, if you need Billy to link us, I'm sure she would be happy to. Always here yeah. to help in anything. If you've ever wanted to have investment properties, a second home or things like that, and just don't even know where to start, um, I'm always here to help. Yeah, that's awesome. And we'll link um, your website and your Instagram in the show notes and everything. So before we, before we part ways, I always ask the same question to all my guests before we get off. And that question is, what are you currently manifesting? I'm manifesting a lot of things. Um, My list is long, girl. You should see my vision board. It is like two, three posters. Um, But one of the main things that I am manifesting is, as you know, is um, having a second child. Mm -hmm. I've just did my eighth round of IVF. So that's Mm -hmm. something that's really important. Um, A property in St. Bart's is another thing that I'm manifesting. I'm manifesting um, a certain number of closings in my real estate. And I'm also manifesting to hit 50 countries before I'm 50 years old. Wow. Amazing. How many countries are you at right now? I think it's like 30 something. Okay. So I need to hurry up. I'm 42. So got to hurry up. Yeah. That that's a lot of travel. I wish you well on all that travel. Okay. Avisha, thank you so much. And, uh, thanks for coming on sending you a big virtual hug and thank you everybody for listening. Thanks.